Lumpy and bumpy. With a few craters to go with it. Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Eric C, and you're watching The Art of Noise. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Had a nice day today. Today was my mother's uh, birthday, so we ended up celebrating that a little bit. What you're looking at here is the old Firefly guitar. Now, yeah, it kind of looks a little funny right now because of what I've been doing. So I'm going with Plan B right now. I'm going to coat this with epoxy resin and make it look really really nice as far as gloss goes the problem I found out with this thing here trying to fix it the um, trying to fix the side over here and then to get rid of this crack is the finish on this guitar is really thin so I'm using 1500 grit sandpaper to try to sand down the areas that I need to work on to fix the crack and even the 1500 grit sandpaper kind of ate through whatever clear is on here. I don't know for sure if it's a lacquer. It doesn't cut like a lacquer. It doesn't have that lacquer smell, but it probably kind of like aired off a little bit. So you're not going to really smell too much of anything. But sometimes with newer guitars, when you start sanding on them, you can start to smell the lacquer. Uh, and I didn't smell that on this thing here, so I don't really know what this finish is, but it's not lacquer. Right here was a very, very high spot. Now, when I sand, I use anything that I can use, basically, that either is a flat surface or rounded air, uh, surfaces in order to get a nice flat. Well, if you can't notice, there's some spots here there's some spots here there's a spot right here you can tell on each side of it because it's dull it's sanded but there's a low spot these are all low spots this right here was a high spot so what i have to do with it is kind of go over it a little bit with some touch-up paint before i can clear this and now i kind of want to show you guys something when Sanding a finish on anything, and I learned this from doing custom work with the vehicles that we used to do um, years ago. Never use like the palm of your hand for sanding, okay? Like your fingertips and stuff like that. Always use like a, a block or something. And I'm going to show you a reason why using your hand is not really a good idea versus block. And you kind of see that I have some old pill bottles over here as well. I use those for sanding, especially rounded areas, flat surfaces, uh, to keep those edges really nice and sharp. Now, with this here, this kind of has a little bit of a roundness to it, where they ended up cutting. Here's the flat area, and then it goes into a round area. Now, I still use something like this, or I will use something flexible that can go with the roundness of the area and sand it evenly down to where it comes up with a nice 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 finish now you can see right here where it's still sanded but it's darker here and lighter here right here that's where i went through the clear coat so this is like like nothing they didn't put enough clear on here at all to protect this now as i was sanding with the block on the face of this i ended up getting a high spot here cut right through the clear and right through the finish very very fast with 1500 grit sandpaper yeah so i'm going to show you a little something here now this is the top of this guitar all right now i'm going to do something that i don't normally do and you're going to see why i don't do this now you can see the reflection of the light here really nice and stuff so what I've got here is a piece of 1500 grit sandpaper. And what I'm going to do with this sandpaper is I'm going to show you a little trick that you may not know when sanding and it's going to harm what you're doing. So I see I got the sandpaper like this. Now if I go like this with the sandpaper, I'm just going you know, kind of go and, and move it around. Now, 
If I wipe this off, dry it really good. Can you see the stripes that I did with my fingers? You don't want to sand like that, especially on a flat surface. Using the palm or your fingers and your hand and stuff, going like this, well, you can see each finger. That's going to give you a wavy finish when you're finished with it. Wavy finish when you're finished, yeah. So you want to avoid that. Now, you can go side to side like this, all right, and still come up with a halfway decent finish. But the best route, your better bet, is they have some type of a block and wet sand with a block and that'll make this surface nice and flat nice and smooth without having those lines from your fingers see what I mean no more stripes yeah this is something that we've done years ago always have done it on any vehicle that we worked on in order to have that nice gloss finish that looks like glass all the way down without the waves without any of the uh, uh, craters and shit like that fish eyes whatever you want to talk whatever you want to call it well block sanding is the way to go now also for doing round areas say like this area here where it's kind of got a uh, it's tapered down this way. Well, what I do is I'll use this pill bottle here and just follow that that area to sand it nice and smooth. Now this is an area where I had a problem where there was a crack in the finish. And I really didn't like how it turned out. So that's why I'm kind of going over this again and leveling everything out really nice. Get a nice flat surface to put the uh, epoxy resin to go on that. You know, and that gives me a nice, nice flat area now with a sharp lip. As long as I use something flat or on the t flat areas and use something that's a little bit rounded on the rounded edge and follow that angle of the rounded edge, rounded area, I will keep that nice edge that is right there. Now, for say like the sides of the guitar, because these guitars are not really like straight and flat, they got curves to them, and you want to keep keep those curves especially on a guitar like this where it's not a sharp edge on each side how they cut it but it kind of uh, kind of looks like it's a sharp edge and you want to keep that as well so what I end up doing is I'll use the sandpaper around say this pill bottle here now in the garage we actually have foam rubber uh, kind of stiff foam rubber for sanding blocks for doing stuff like this and sanding like this will keep you nice and flat see right here there's a low spot it's nice and shiny there I don't know if you can see that or not there's my finger okay yeah see there's a shiny spot right there there's a divot right there so I have to sand this smooth without going through the layers of whatever non-existing finish there is so I don't go through it and try to get rid of that so it flattens itself out and you'll tell if it's nice and flat because you won't see any more shiny spots and you don't want to sit in one spot too long you want to keep moving because you can make a flat spot and in light you'll notice it and when I start to see that disappear then I know when to stop and right now it still is a little bit low in that spot but I'll be able I'll be able to get that out now normally on a vehicle you know on, on metal sheet metal whatever you'll end up filling that with some scratch filler or some bondo and uh, then sanding it flat again but you don't want to put a lot of bondo or scratch filler on a surface because that can and will uh, crack in over crack over in over eh, crack over time sorry so now this is drying better you can kind of get the idea of where that low spot is right there but everything else looks pretty decent as far as where I sanded goes there's a little bit of a low spot here and then I also see here where it's like that 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 there's like uh, 
sections here. It's like the one, two, three. And this area over here, I don't know if you can see that or not, right over here, it's, you can kind of see that it's, it's like sections. Well, that could be flat spots in the wood when they were sanding the wood going around the edges. They ended up making some flat spots over here. The paint followed those flat spots, or that could be how it was sanded before it was buffed out. Somebody took their time and was in this area a little bit too long and made flat spots in that. Well, I'm going to get all that out. And then the body is going to get epoxy resin as well. So there's some sanding tips that, uh, you know, hopefully you guys can use in your projects that you're doing. When you get to areas where it just doesn't want to come out, where it's still shiny, you have a nice gloss finish over here, you can lightly go over that with your finger or with your hand uh, with the sandpaper, but then go back over it again with the... Uh, like, like I used a pill bottle or something that has that roundness to it that I could follow that angle in a small area and then go over that area again to make sure you get your sharp lines kind of like right here there's a nice decent line going around I didn't round it over because I use flat something flat and something flat or that can contour itself with this angle that is kind of rounded and still keep that nice sharp line over here now stuff like this where it is fading out around the edges you know I'll have to go over that with the sandpaper again and uh, this I kind of do the, like these round edges right here I do that freehand now I'll sand the top or the bottom I'll sand the sides then I'll go over all the shiny spots by hand and what I do with that is I'll take and I'll take the sandpaper here's a piece of 1500 and I put that edge between my two fingers and go over it that way it gives me uh, it doesn't eat up a lot of that corner and it doesn't give me any problems where it's flat spot here or a flat spot on this side then I'll go over it with the flat block again and make sure my edges are nice and sharp that's why when you see like a lot of my guitars that I end up doing some buffing work to them or doing the epoxy resin on them you don't see any goofy edges the edges look nice and sharp the way they're supposed to be part of that is the epoxy resin because when the epoxy resin goes over the edge it forms itself with it but if you don't have a nice edge that epoxy resin is going to follow whatever disaster your edge looks like same thing with clear coats if you're using like just a spray spray clear coat whatever that edge looks like that's what's going to look like when you clear it so you want to make sure that you know your edges look nice now this spot over here I'm going to have to kind of scuff that a little bit and apply a little bit more uh, paint to it now what I've been using which works out pretty damn good with this are these paint markers they're permanent and they're kind of nice as far as you know you get them in different sizes as far as like the tip goes and it's basically just a marker you get a flat or you can go with a smaller tip which is a little bit rounded you can get those in um, like the hobby area over at Walmart or, or uh, basically any place that sells hobby supplies now for small touch-ups these work out really great the only problem is is you can only get them in basic colors so that's a little bit of an issue but for solid colors like a red a blue a black a green even a white that will work out perfect now like I said I still have to go over it a little bit more and touch it up but that high spot that was here is gone this is nice and flat and level so when I do my pour with the epoxy resin you know these areas here that are low the epoxy will kind of build up in those areas that are low spots and this high spot over here won't be a hump anymore it'll be nice and flat so when the epoxy resin starts to settle uh, gravity takes over with it it is a liquid form until it cures but as it lays out it'll fill in a lot of low spots like these spots here and the spot over here this little crack right over here that kind of like a little shiny spot which looks like maybe something like hit it or something something happened there that'll all be filled in and once the epoxy resin you know like I said gravity takes over until it cures it's going to puddle in the low areas so and it's going to look flat it self levels on a high spot well you'll still see that high spot it'll kind of be a hump here right over here and that you don't want so what the plan is is to sand down 
the back, the sides, the front. Mask off the neck area. Uh, touch up a little bit if need to be where these cracks are over here. And uh, go ahead and just put pour the epoxy resin. I'm going to mask off all these holes. I'm going to cap off these guys. Mask around over here so these guys don't fill in with epoxy resin. Now this is the old guitar. Okay, this is the old one that I got. Um, that uh, wall in a box, you know, the neck was broken. You kind of see, compared to what the other guitar was, at least they attempted to put shielding paint inside of the um, cavities for the pickups. This one here, um, it they didn't, and it's actually kind of sticky inside there. So I don't know. Again, I'm not sure what they use for a clear on this, or, or you know, what type of a paint, but it's very, very thin. And I have to be very, very careful that when I start doing all the sanding on this, I don't go through it because especially on this top where I got black and black, um, you know, going through that, I don't want to lose any of this texture as far as the figuring in this maple uh, veneer that's on here. Um, so I can't use you know, a paint marker or a paint. It has to be some type of a dye for the wood. Now if this has, if I go through this and this has a um, sanding sealer or some type of a wood sealer on it before they end up applying the, the finish, I mean they could probably have masked this off somehow and did a spray on dye on the wood um, and then cleared over that when it dried, peeled off the mask over this and over this. But what wood and water, you know, it kind of absorbs, so you would see a lot of fuzzy or bleeding through around these sharp edges here. So I don't know exactly how they did this, but I like it. It's pretty cool. It's very interesting. And uh, yeah, so we're going to make this guy, even though this isn't the one that is getting all the upgrades, the finish on that one is in great shape. Um, I looked it over after I found out about this hump over here. And kind of rub my hand on it, you know, just to feel what was going on. And I didn't feel any raised areas all over that body. So I went ahead and started working on it as far as doing the install and the upgrades of all the components that are going to be on that. I am going to have to drill out these holes a little bit bigger for the other guitar. That's not a big deal either. So right now I ended up picking up a few things. So this is going to be a little bit of an unbagging. So let me move this out of the way because I do not want to drop anything on it. First off, this one here, um, get a razor blade. So I started to pick up some more parts for my build that I'll be doing. Is there anything in here? Nope, that's it. No sticker, no nothing. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So this here are the... Uh, what are these? Oh, I know what these are. I know what these are. So I have a small router table. Okay, it's nothing really, really big and nothing really fancy, but it does work really well. So I picked up, now this one here is a, uh, this is like an inch, an inch and something. I know this one here is a two inch one. I think this is an inch and in, in a, a quarter or something. But this was a double bearing, one on top, one on the bottom. This is a single bearing on the top. And what these are are router bits. And like I said, when I start building and start working on my stuff, I need to get the tools first before you start doing it. Now, my router table is kind of small. It's not very big. The router that I have is a hand router that bolts on the bottom of the table. But... I will still be able to use it to get the sides really nice. And another thing I ended up getting to help me with that is my first template for guitars. Yeah, so this is going to be something that I will be using for building my own guitar. And I will be doing kind of a change with the build as far as how uh, my style and what the style of this template is going to be. Alright, so how did he do this? It's just a regular box that he kind of folded over. I don't want to cut the template.
All right, here we go. So this is a burned template of, you guessed it, a Les Paul. And he gives you pinpoints of where the bridge is going to be. Uh, you got your pickups. These will come out. You got your center line. You have where you're going to put your screw to mount this. You also have kind of a line over here of like the angle that the body would be in. And on the back of it, you got, here's your neck. And then you have a pick guard that you can make as well. So yeah, I picked this thing up. Uh, Guitars by Design USA. This is burned around the edges. I can mount this to the top of the blank and outline what I want. Cut it on the, hopefully, on my bandsaw and then use the uh, template on the router so I have a nice clean edges. Now this is also another, some more parts, spider. Die fucker. There you go. This is also some more parts I picked up for the build guitar. Oh, that's nice. Insulation insider. And these are some Goto locking tuners. Anything else in the bag before I throw it away? Oh. These are go Goto locking tuners. These are the mini ones. And these will go on the headstock of the build that I do. I make whatever when I start that so I'm already getting the supplies that I need for doing the project um, it gives me the neck depth as far as but I already have templates that I can use um, I got to pick up routing you know I got everything the nice thing about this though is it, it gives you an idea of actually where your bridge and your tail pace is going to be so that's kind of nice I wish they would have drilled out the template, but they pinpointed exactly where they're going. They're located at. This is kind of nice. Um, I will be using it. This is not an MDF board. I can actually probably stain this and, and dye it and color it. This also gives you like your control cavity over here. It also gives you the cutout for that. That would be on the back of the guitar. So yeah, this is kind of cool. Again, you know, some of the stuff on here I will be using, some of it I won't be using. This will be my version of a Les Paul body that I'll be doing over here. And uh, hopefully um, with the veneers that I've got, you know, it's going to be a real nice, real nice, real nice guitar. So I'm getting basically everything that I need set up and this is going to work out pretty damn good. Other than having a um, electric planer, yeah, I've got hand planers, but the electric one would probably be a lot better to thin out the bodies a little bit than throwing it on the mill, which that's a pain in the ass. I also have some more parts coming in for doing uh, some more of those pen holders. So I'll be making videos of that too. So I got I got a lot of projects that I'm, I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm still waiting on somebody else who wants me to do a refinish on their guitar, um, but he's been pretty busy. So um, yeah, we'll see how this goes out, how this works out. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys learned a little bit on the sanding procedures uh, as far as the way you use your hand on the sandpaper and the direction you go reflects how your finish is going to look. Uh, if it's going to be wavy, if you get it in a little certain type of light after buffing it out and you kind of see that it's a little bit on the wavy side, well, your hand or your block, however you were sanding it, has a lot to do with that. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a good one, and I will catch up with you all later.